turned into. Uh, virtually and in person, we'll continue to offer both in-person and online worship services with printed copies being distributed to those who cannot attend in person and who do not have access to the internet. We encourage people to come out though and worship in the sanctuary with us. There's lots of room to socially distance. You're welcome to wear a mask if you wish or not if you don't. And um, yeah, it'd be good to have, have you here with us. For those who are joining us online, we um, invite you to have a candle or a tea light ready uh, and available. We gather in this season after Epiphany, the season of light when Jesus shows us the ways he is manifest demonstrably present for, with, and among us. So there are a couple of announcements. The rest I'll leave for you to look at uh, in the bulletin, and they've been, they've been up on the screen. But the UCW meat pies are available for sale, and uh, I, guess, I guess Lorna would be the person to talk to about those. They're only uh, $4.50, and uh, you can do cash or a check made payable to Melville United Church UCW. Uh, of course, Midday Music at Melville is continuing this Wednesday with Brad Halls playing the piano, and um, it's, it's just wonderful. Uh, I've been able to be at a few of them, and uh, it's so delightful to, to hear his music and his, uh, his intimate knowledge of, of the pieces that he plays. So you're encouraged to come out on Wednesday at noon and uh, enjoy. This week it's um, the music of Richard Rogers. Uh, he's the, uh, the uh, one creating the music, and the, um, the lyricist is Lorenz Hart. So come and hear favorites like My Funny Valentine, Bewitched, Where or When, Falling in Love with Love, and many more. And um, there will be a lasagna luncheon. This is a little bit off, but uh, ways off, but please, uh, please keep in mind for your, for your uh, calendar. On Sunday, February 19th, Suzanne Flewelling and the UCW will host a lasagna lunch after the service, so that will be in the, the chapel and the um, parlor. So please plan to come out and, uh, and enjoy a time of food and fellowship. Okay, the rest I'm gonna leave for you. I invite you now to join us for a time of worship and contemplation. Oh, and I guess I should say, sorry, so much for worship and contemplation. Um, thank you to everyone who looked after things in my absence. It was, it was a quiet, a restful sort of two weeks off, and my thanks to those who led in worship and, and uh, took care of pastoral care. All right. We acknowledge that the land on which we gather to worship is the traditional land of the Patoon, the Haudenosaunee, the Anishinaabawagi, the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Odawa and the Mississauga nations. We acknowledge that we live on this land as people who have agreed to share in the care and use of this land as a result of the treaties, the Simcoe Patent Treaty No. 4 of 1793 and the Haldeman Treaty of 1784. These outline the rights and responsibilities associated with our place in this land. May we be people who remember this with thanksgiving and respect. And I invite you to join in our candle lighting liturgy. As we light this candle, may its warmth symbolize the love that radiates from our very being. It also represents the light of life, the light of Christ that sparks us in a, to a place of grace. Our call to worship in the pews or at home, we remember that worship is more than showing up. May prayers and readings remind us that worship is more than sharing words. In this time of worship, may we be reminded that worship is not just something to be observed. I invite us to gather our hearts as we share in prayer. Let us pray. This is the moment of praise. Praise to the Father that has created us and sustains us in glory and in sorrow. 
This is the moment of trust. This is the moment of community. This is the moment of hope. Our opening hymn is from Voices United, number 336, Christ Whose Glory Fills the Skies. We are invited now to confess our sins, our shortcomings, our brokenness before God, the source of freedom and forgiveness. Let us pray. Almighty God, we confess that we have not been faithful to you. <laughs> Almighty God, we confess that we have not been faithful to you in our thoughts and actions. We have been selfish in our desires and quarrelsome in our relationships. We have followed fear to divide us from those who seem different and let distrust separate us from our brothers and sisters. Shine your light into our darkened hearts. Save us from our divisive ways. Unite us in the same mind as Jesus Christ who dwells with you and the Holy Spirit in perfect harmony. Amen. <clears throat> Hear the good news. God offers forgiveness to those who turn to God in true repentance. Therefore, trust in God, who breaks the bonds of our oppression and covers us in mercy. Thanks be to God. Amen. So it's time for children's time. I wondered if you wanted to come down, Emma, or if you want to stay where you are. What would you like? You can come down. I like your dress. That's cute with all the reindeers and stuff on it. And hearts. So it's kind of like Christmas to Valentine's. Good choice. Excellent. All right. So today I wanted to talk about 
um, one of our readings, and I'm not gonna read it to you, but I'm just gonna explain it a little bit. So Paul writes lots of letters, and Paul got, got word from the people in Corinth that things weren't going so well, that everybody was grumpy and unhappy and upset, and uh, he decided he better write a letter and tell them to do things differently. So what that happened was they were following all different people. They weren't following Jesus. They were following this one and that one. And so, and so it's kind of like this deck of cards. So, you know, some of the people were following Paul and some of the people were following Jesus and some of the people were following Peter and some of the people were following Apollos. And there were just so many different people that everybody was in disarray. So you had, you know, these people were face up and these people were face down and it was all just very confusing. In fact, there were some people who were even face up and face down at the same time. And so Jesus, or Paul said, you know, Jesus is the one we need to follow, not all these other people. So we're just gonna follow Jesus. So when we follow Jesus, everybody's going the same way and everything all works out. So I just wanted to share that with you today. So let's have a prayer and everyone can pray. Loving God, we ask you that you would help us to follow Jesus and that you would help us to know his love and his guidance. We ask that you would help us to do his will and your will. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. So the song I have is one that um, we did at camp. When I was in Newfoundland, there was a camp called Bury Heights. And uh, lots of people went to Bury Heights, and I got to be the chaplain there a few times. And uh, so we had this song called Place in the Choir. And it talks about how everybody can be in the choir together. So good, some of you are nodding. That's excellent. <laughs> All right.
Thank you. <laughs> As we prepare to hear scripture, let us pray. God, illumine our minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read, our eyes may see your kingdom, our ears may hear the call of Jesus, and our hearts may know the joy of your salvation. Amen. First scripture today is from Paul's letter to the Corinthians. I beg you, sisters and brothers, in the name of our Savior Jesus Christ, to agree in your message. Let there be no factions, rather be united in mind and judgment. I have been informed, my sisters and brothers, by certain members of Chloe's household, that you are quarreling amongst yourselves. What I mean is, one of you is saying, I belong to Paul, another, I belong to Apollos, still another, I belong to Cephas, still another, I belong to Christ. What, has Christ been divided into parts? Was it Paul who was crucified for you? Was it in Paul's name that you were baptized? Frank, frankly, I'm thankful I didn't baptize any of you except Crispus and Gaius so that none of you can say you were baptized in my name. Oh yes, I did baptize the household of Stephanus, but no one else as far as I can remember. The point is, Christ didn't send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel. Not with human rhetoric, however, lest the cross of Christ be rendered void of its meaning. For the message of the cross is complete absurdity to those who are headed for ruin. But to us who are experiencing salvation, it's the power of God. Scripture says, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and thwart the learning of the learned. Where are the wise? Where are the scholars? Where are the philosophers of this age? Has not God turned the wisdom of this world into folly? If it was God's wisdom that the world and its wisdom would not know God, it was because God wanted to save those who have faith through the foolishness of the message that we preach. For while the, Jew, the Jews call for miracles and the Greeks look for wisdom, here we are preaching a Messiah nailed to a cross. To the Jews, this is an obstacle they cannot get over, and to the Greeks, it is madness. But to those who have been called, whether they are Jews or Greeks, Christ is the power and the wisdom of God. Our ministry of music today is The Fugue from Sonata No. 2 by Felix Mendelssohn, played by Colleen Weber on the organ.
Our gospel reading today comes from the gospel according to Matthew in chapter 4. When Jesus heard that John the Baptist had been arrested, he went back to Galilee. He left Nazareth and settled in Capernaum, a lakeside town near the territory of Zebulun and Naphtali. In this way, the prophecy of Isaiah was fulfilled. Land of Zebulun, land of Naphtali, the way to the sea on the far side of Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. The people who lived in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of the shadow of death, a light has dawned. From that time on, Jesus became, began proclaiming the message, change your hearts and minds, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. As Jesus was walking along the Sea of Galilee, he watched two brothers, Simon, who was called Peter, and Andrew, casting a net into the sea. They fished by trade. Jesus said to them, come, follow me, and I will make you fishers of humankind. They immediately abandoned their nets and began to follow Jesus. Jesus walked along farther and caught sight of a second pair of brothers. James and John, then Zebedee. They too were in their boat, mending their nets with their father. Jesus traveled through Galilee, teaching. Jesus called them, and immediately they abandoned both boat and father to follow him. Jesus traveled throughout Galilee, teaching in the synagogues, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom of heaven, and healing all kinds of diseases and sicknesses among the people. May God bless to our understanding these readings from Holy Scripture. Amen. Let us pray. God, our light and our salvation, Jesus announced the nearness of your kingdom and called his disciples to be fishers of women and men. Give us courage to follow in the way of Jesus that our lives may bear witness to the good news of the kingdom at hand and our vocation serve to draw people to your salvation. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, in the power of the Holy Spirit. May the words I speak and the reflection that we all share find a response that is worthy of you, most just, most loving, and most compassionate God. Amen. You may have been saddened, as I was, to hear a couple of weeks ago the news in the days after Christmas of the death of OPP Constable Greg Perchala who stopped to help motorists of a, the motorists of a car in a snowy ditch near Hagersville, only to be shot down in the road. A horrible thing anywhere at any time, but not least because it happened so close to Christmas. Constable Prashala, who was 28, had completed his first year with the OPP and had, mere hours before his death, been notified that he had passed his probation period with the OPP. He was a young man who heard a call and answered it. I think about that call to serve that he accepted and responded to. It wasn't the first call to serve to which he had responded. Earlier in his life, he had served with the Canadian Armed Forces. Both of these calls are challenging, demanding much of anyone who was called. I was thinking of a, a group of sailors from the HMCS St. John's who do a run for the rock uh, in Newfoundland every summer, and they do so to support the Children's Wish Foundation. There was a dinner that was prepared for them in Arnold's Cove, where I lived, and which I was invited to attend. And at that dinner, a retired, retired naval officer talked about responding to the call to serve, saying that each member of the armed forces, or the police, or firefighters, or whomever, had written a check with their lives to the people, with no amount filled in, and then they signed it. I think all first responders do the same thing. They are called to serve and they respond regardless of what costs they may have to face. And as evidence of the impact of the call on their lives, we only have to look at the hundreds and hundreds of police members of the OPP, Canadian Armed Forces members, emergency services personnel, and more, who came to Constable Perchella's funeral. In our Gospel reading today, Jesus begins his ministry. 
After the impetus of the arrest of John the Baptist, Jesus sets off, moving from Nazareth to Capernaum on the shores of the Sea of Galilee to share his message that the kingdom of heaven has drawn near. In responding to the call on his own life, Jesus seeks to call out those who will aid him in fulfilling this call. One commentator calls them activists as opposed to just supporters, and we call them apostles. Jesus sees Simon Peter and Andrew and calls them from their fishing boats and nets. They don't hesitate. They come immediately to follow him, to help bring the message of God's love to those suffering the oppression of the Roman Empire. And then Jesus calls James and John, and whether they have seen the conversation and the actions of Simon Peter and Andrew, or they have simply responded to the call in their own right, straight away they leave their boats and their nets and their father to join Jesus. The call of the apostles, the call to duty and to serve in a time and place, we may not have thought of them in the same way, but there are many similarities between the call of the apostles and the call to those who become first responders. There is the, as it is described, a keystone call and a keystone decision to become a police officer or a firefighter or more. And in doing so, People give up the life that they have known to take on new responsibilities and new tasks and new relationships. But within that keystone call, there are a number of smaller calls that are made every day for them as well. And as we think back to the funeral of Constable Pershala, one of those calls is to mark the passing in the line of duty of a fellow officer. I always marvel at the distances that people travel to come to those funerals, the funerals of a fallen comrade, they have answered the call to do so, and we have no way of knowing what their personal reasons are, why they might have chosen to come, but respond they do. In a similar way for Simon Peter and Andrew and James and John, they were likely contracted to be the by the local representative of the Roman Empire to deliver as many fish at whatever price was set in a specific time frame. Their decision to get up and leave that life, those strictures that may have been in place for them, were perhaps motivated by freedom, by the desire for release from the torment of such backbreaking, unrewarding work. Perhaps they sought to be free of the oppression of the Roman Empire. For James and John, there is the added consideration that they worked with or for their father. Perhaps there were relationship issues that contributed to their decision. We will never know the particular and personal reasons. We only know that they answered the call. Another similarity between a call today and the call of the apostles is that it is not a destination. Answering that call is not a destination. It is not an event. It is a journey. Within that call to serve are many little calls to follow Jesus in whatever he was doing, to step up for whatever is put before them. Some of these calls follow, to follow Jesus come from Jesus himself, and some of them come from those who seek him out for healing or for teaching or for food. For police officers, the calls within that larger keystone call come daily, even hourly, as they are dispatched to accidents and mishaps, threats to the public safety or lives, as they respond to the call to represent the service or force to which they have committed themselves, even to some extent as they go about their personal lives. Both the apostles and the first responders hear the daily call to serve and they respond, sometimes more clearly and competently than other days. We remember Simon Peter faltering on the water, the apostles wondering why Jesus is talking to the woman at the well, the gut reaction to send away those hungry crowds. So what does this speak to our hearts? 
We too are called, not likely to be police or first responders, not likely to be apostles, but perhaps to be disciples who follow Jesus. We are called to do our part to draw the kingdom of heaven ever nearer. It is not a response to a call that is an event. It's not a one and done type of scenario. The call that Jesus has for us is to follow, to commit ourselves to the way of life of his followers. The challenge is that we may not feel up to responding to the call on a given day. We may not respond especially well all the time. But the good news is, it is not a call to perfection. It is not a call to single-handedly drag people to the kingdom of heaven, nor the kingdom of heaven to the people. Jesus says, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. It is a call to commit ourselves in all our imperfections, in all our fallible humanness, to the work of bringing about the kingdom. May we hear the call of Jesus and respond with our whole hearts. Amen. Our next hymn is from Voices United, the Red Hymn Book, number 563, Jesus, You Have Come to the Lake Shore.
So I wonder if there are any joys and concerns that anyone would like to share with us today. Pardon me? The organ is back. Yes, yes, it is wonderful. <laughs> Colleen, we had a meeting on Wednesday, and Colleen had to pop in and just give it a try on Wednesday night just to see how it was. So, yeah, we're <laughs> it's quieter, yes. <laughs> well, quieter and, and plays all at the same time. <laughs> Well, I have some birthdays. Um, Bruce Parkin celebrated 50 years on Wednesday the 18th. And uh, Barbara Linden celebrated 90 years on Friday, January 20th. Mary Lloyd celebrated yesterday, uh, the uh, 21st. Mark Short celebrates this coming Thursday, the 26th. And last but not least, Jim Nevitt celebrated on Thursday, December 29th. We, uh, we missed that one, so we wanted to get that in there. All right, well, let us practice the art of praying with our eyes wide open that in seeing the world and those within it that we are called to serve, we may be opening the eyes of our hearts to all in need around us. Let us pray. God of light and life, God of hope and purpose and healing, we give thanks for such signs as there are of your spirit at work even yet in our world signs that the coming of your kingdom is as not far off as it sometimes seems. We give thanks for those people whose presence lights up our lives because of their gentleness, their joy, their compassion, their simple goodness. For those who have dedicated their lives to the work of healing and reconciliation, those brave enough to speak truth to power, sometimes at great risk to themselves, for those who walk with others through the valley of shadows, uh, valley of death's shadow, those who make life fuller and more joyful by sharing the creative gifts that come from you. But we might feel hard pressed, O oh God, to say that your kingdom is any nearer now than it was when Jesus proclaimed it by the lakeside and in, in the synagogue in the town squares of Capernaum. So many are sitting in darkness still. Death still casts a long shadow and holds many in its thrall. And so we pray, as Jesus said we should, for the time to come when your name is honored, your will be done on earth as in heaven. We ask your blessing on those who, like John, have been wrongfully arrested or even killed for being true to what they believe. On those who, like Jesus, have had to move from one place to another in order to feel safe. On those who, like the crowds who clamored for his touch, are sick and desperate for healing of body, mind, and soul. God, whose light broke into the world's darkness once a long time ago in a man called Jesus, may that same light shine on us and in us and through us for the world's healing and our own and all the glory of your name. Amen. We gather this and all our prayers and we offer them to you using the words that Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And Patty has our minute for mission. Today in Minutes for Mission, I'll be talking about dignity is on the menu. Many of us sit down to good home-cooked meals and can afford to go out for dinner from time to time. We're able to prepare elaborate dinners at Thanksgiving and Christmas. Our daily experience doesn't include standing in line, tray in hand, for every single meal. 
That's why the special dinners like Cafe Sing Zero Sept hosts are so important. Center 507 is an Ottawa-based mission and service partner. Several times a year, the adult drop-in center sets up a small room for a special fine dining meal with gourmet food, decorations and candlelight. For just $2, participants have their choice of a meal accompanied by full service and great company. We realize that people in our community struggle with poverty and to wait in a long line for a meal. When they, were, they are served, they weren't given any choices and felt pressured to leave so that the next person could be served. That's why we started Cafe Sing Zero Sept, says Richard LeBlanc, Center 507's Executive Director. We saw a real change in how people felt about themselves after experiencing this kind of meal. We wanted this dining experience to become the norm rather than the exception. While COVID-19 has been challenging, it also helped the drop-in take a step towards achieving their goal. One of the great things that happened when COVID hit was that everyone sat down and was served, said LeBlanc. Center 507 now serves 25 people at a sit-down meal and provides 150 meals to, to go each day. That cafe has incorporated a, train, a training program where participants learn to serve. Two, we are taking the next steps toward achieving our goal. We aren't going back to lineups after the pandemic. Vows LeBlanc, thank you for giving generously through missions and services. Your support has created a world where everyone has enough food served with dignity. God, the source of all good things, has given us what we need. In joyful response, let us offer our gifts, the fruit of our labors, the dedication of our hearts for loving service in the name of Christ. And I invite you to sing our offering hymn, Praise God from Whom All Blessings Flow. Let us pray together. Living God, we bring our gifts of money, but if Jesus is our best guide as to what you most want from us, then maybe that is not it at all. He did not ask anyone for money. He wanted far less and a great deal more. Give up everything safe and familiar, he said, and come and follow me. What is he asking of us today?
God, give us grace and courage to offer not what we think we can spare, but what you know we need to. What we need to give. <laughs> In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our closing hymn is from Voices United, again, the red hymn book, number 602, Blessed Be the Tie That Binds. Just a reminder that there is coffee in the parlor afterwards, and I invite you to share in our commissioning. Into the world we follow you. No, into the world. We follow you. Into the questions of life and journeys of hope. We you. Into the traditions of our community's past and unknown future. We you. Into the heart of our congregation and meeting places into life, all of life. So watch, I'm going to change the light right now. It's all contained in one place. But now it goes everywhere, to everyone, with everyone, so that everywhere you go today, the light of Christ will go with you. May the grace of Christ who calls us to go, may the power of the Holy Spirit who empowers us to sustain you, May the salvation of God, who gives us peace, be with you this day and always. Amen. <laughs>